and it's a nice sunny day as you can see i've got my sombrero on uh, sun out here is pretty intense even in the winter you can get a good sunburn so i've uh i never really liked wearing hats but i'll tell you since i've been here i've taken to wearing them because it's just uh you get fried too easily so So as you can see, this is the south facade of the Schaus, and there's Buzz with the solar panels. And we're beginning to cut uh, down into the hillside here uh, to dig a house pad. There will be a gabby and retaining wall that goes along the cut right here, like this. And over toward the solar panels where the tripod is there, there's, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little flag and a stake. And so all that will be gabby and wall about five or six feet high. And the house pad will be dropped a little bit uh, so that we don't have that high profile in the landscape. The only, the only exception would be is that we will have a second story section that will stick up above here, but just one small section of the house will do that so that we can get a view in all directions. As you can see, we have a lot more clearing and cutting to do. Um, in fact, down by that flag there, that stake, we still have to go four inches below that, I think. So it's going to be cut into the hillside a little bit. Keep a low profile in the landscape. We don't want to advertise, hey, we're here. Reba, you're all dirty. Why is that? Hmm? Why are you all dirty? I'm playing in the dirt. Hmm? <laughs> Well, I was really looking forward to getting some earthwork done today, but we have a little problem. Uh, there is the cylinder, the ram, that operates the loader on Dyna, the left side. And uh, there's a pin, you can see the pin on the end there, that passes all the way through under the frame and connects the two hangers. This is one hanger and there's another one like it behind. And uh, apparently at some time in the past, I mean, I saw this repair, but I figured it would be okay. Apparently at some time in the past, this uh, pin completely snapped off. And rather than replacing the pin, because it's a 10 inch pin, rather than replacing it all the way through, they just ground the end flat and decided that they would re-weld this thing without welding the pin just just you know making some weld repairs to the hanger and they thought that that would hold weight well obviously it is not because this right here is a very clean surface meaning the weld did not attach they it, it didn't even weld through there's just a little bit of weld right here but the weld failed i mean there really is no weld here um here and so you know this side of the hanger took the brunt of all the forces and this snapped clean off here. This is a terrible repair. I don't know what made anybody think who owned this in the past that this thing would ever hold. I didn't know that this was snapped here. I saw this repair, but I had no idea that this was snapped. You put a new pin in here, a new hanger. We're gonna get this thing fixed right so it doesn't give us any trouble. Well, it's a couple days later, actually well, four days later, and uh, I found a local machinist who could uh, cut a new pin uh, for us. And then uh, he also cut a new 
a hanger plate. He recommended a, a local welder who came out and, you know, did some welding. Honestly, I don't know what to make of the welding uh, because, you know, I asked the machinist to make these new gussets to replace these. He just left them on there and they're cracked and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. It looks like he welded it here and about hmm, an inch or so back behind here. Given the way that this failed before, I'm, I'm just not sure that's enough welds to hold it, you know, with the amount of weight and force that's on this thing. And underneath, he, it was really hard to access up underneath there, but this pin goes all the way underneath the frame into another hanger on the other side like this. Some of these welds did not penetrate like along this side of the pin over here. It's just, it's not pretty. And I, this is a difficult spot to access. I hesitate to put this thing back together without maybe getting a little bit more welding on it. I think at least since he was only able to, to get about this much of the pin done on the back side of this hanger, then I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of weld on this side of the hanger so I can get it all the way around. And then I'm going to look again very closely at this and see if there is a a way to get some more welding on this because I, I just I don't want to take a chance on the welds cracking this thing failing again while I'm trying to use it. You guys ever seen a solar power welder? There it is right there. A Lincoln tombstone welder hooked up to our 50 amp 225 volt service on Buzz, the mobile solar generator. Solar power is about to fix this tractor. we've got this put back together we got the cylinder put back on uh, painted stuff's in place we've got a couple of uh, temporary hoses here in place because the old hoses were ruined when this thing failed these aren't too great a shape they're used hoses that I pulled off a of Dyna we'll see how long they last before they blow I mean I wouldn't be surprised at the moment I start this up and put some pressure on it one of them blows which means we'll have to go get another hose here pretty quick it was um, challenging we got it done we'll uh, light this thing off and uh see how dyna does well good morning working on the cut you can see this is the line actually going to cut back a little bit more so i have some backfill area when i put the gabion wall in here's the cut for the house pad and you can see i started cutting back further these stakes are all lined up these three i continue to cut going down this way cut down into the hill and uh septic's gonna go over there somewhere but uh just checking out dyna this morning got done with her repair yesterday checking out the action on this it looks like this ram rubs up against that hanger just a little bit no cracks in the welds seems to be performing okay that looks all right let's check the other side where i did the repair on this side that weld there was cracked so i just put a new bead of welding in there and painted it that looks okay there was a really big crack underneath inside in the hanger let's see how that looks now so as you can see i stuck several beads of welding there Looks okay so far. Seems to be holding up. Looks like it's gonna be okay. One problem I got with Dyna is with that steering ram right there. It leaks uncontrollably. I had it rebuilt twice. I don't know what the answer is, except I guess just buy a new ram. It's leaking a lot of hydraulic oil. I've gotta get this job done, so I don't have time to wait for the ram to be done again. I've waited too long on prior repairs. And right now, while hydraulic oil is a little cheaper, I don't like it that it's being poured out here on the landscape but it's you know it's not a lot as it goes it means i gotta check the hydraulic oil regularly on dyna you know make sure she's okay so far so good we just get some more uh land clearing done a couple hours into this side over here got about a three foot tall cut right there i'm gonna break through break on through to the other side break through over there just gradually digging this out and picking it up and taking it elsewhere I'm gonna get this cut along here and dug out so we can go down a little bit more and then as we go that way we'll dig in it looks like the septic tank is going to be probably right about there somewhere and we'll go down the hill to a leach field we were scraping the ground here for the uh, house pad <clears throat> we scraped a little bit of archaeology it appears looks like we got an old campfire some charcoal here um, some burnt rocks things like that this is about a foot and a half below grade and uh, so i don't have a trowel or anything but look at this and see 
you know, sometimes in an old campfire like this, and I, who knows how old it is, you know, it could be six months old, it could be 200 years. The Ute, uh, Amer you know, Native Americans, the Utes used to occupy this area. And it could be that this is an old fire from, you know, one of their occupations. But there it is. So we'll keep an eye on this spot in this area. If, uh, if we bring up anything more, we'll let you know. But it's kind of cool. Been digging out this area for the house pad and we're at about the depth we need. The problem is, is that right at the depth we need to be, there's some, there's a layer of really, really soft sand. And you can see this stuff over here is kind of shiny. It's hard, but down below it is really soft sand and uh, real fine gravel. And I keep getting stuck in it. Don't know what to do. You know, I'll back up the backhoe here and dig this out, then come back and scoop it. But I keep getting stuck in this sand and I've got Dinah unstuck several times. I use the boom to push her back end up, put some stuff under the tires, dump whatever's in the bucket because that tends to lighten the rear end. And uh, so increase the weight on the rear end and then back it out slowly. But I gotta figure out gotta figure out how to handle this condition. I thought about deflating some air in the tires. Honestly, I'm not sure it would make a difference. That's how far we've come so far. We gotta, we still have all of this to take out. And then we have to go down, see where that stake is on the pile. We have to go down there and cut it all out level. In fact, going back this way some more. And the septic will be over there. You know, I tried watering this in with a sprinkler last night for several hours. It seemed to help up there on that part uh, where it, you know, can firm up a little better. But down here where this soft stuff is, it doesn't seem to make a difference at all. Uh, it's just so loose and gravelly that uh, even water won't solidify. 